Welcome to our show, The World Brief. Today, we're diving into some significant global happenings. First up, Japan's ruling Liberal Democratic Party is projected to lose its long-standing majority in the upcoming general elections, presenting a major challenge for new Prime Minister Shigeru Ishiba. With public discontent over economic issues and political scandals on the rise, the future of governance in Japan hangs in the balance. In another highlight, the MTR in Hong Kong is celebrating 45 years of connecting lives and supporting urban growth. From humble beginnings with just one line and nine stations, it now boasts a vast network that serves millions daily. The MTR's innovative approach and commitment to service quality have played a crucial role in the city's development and community well-being. Lastly, the superhero film Venom, The Last Dance, has underperformed at the box office, raising eyebrows in the film industry. With lower-than-expected earnings and mixed reviews, it signals a potential shift in audience preferences. As we navigate through these stories, please stay tuned for more detailed coverage. CNN reports that Japan's ruling Liberal Democratic Party, LDP, is anticipated to lose its long-standing majority in the upcoming general election, signaling a significant setback for new Prime Minister Shigeru Ishiba. This political shift comes amidst widespread public dissatisfaction regarding economic challenges and a series of political scandals, including a funding scandal involving undocumented political contributions. Exit polls suggest the LDP, along with its coalition partner Komeido, may secure between 174 and 254 seats in the 465-seat House of Representatives, falling short of the 233 needed for a majority. Ishiba acknowledged the voters' severe judgment and faces the daunting task of potentially forming a coalition government amidst a backdrop of declining approval ratings and increased living costs. South China Morning Post highlights the MTR Corporation's remarkable 45-year journey in Hong Kong, evolving from a single line with nine stations to a sprawling network of 99 stations and 68 light rail stops. The MTR has become synonymous with reliability and safety, serving over 5 million passengers daily while maintaining a punctuality rate of over 99.9%. The corporation has embraced innovative technologies to enhance passenger experience and has played a pivotal role in urban development through its Rail Plus Community model, which integrates residential and commercial spaces with railway infrastructure. As new projects like Kuotung Station and the Tunma Line extension unfold, MTR continues to foster community growth and contribute to Hong Kong's socioeconomic advancement. Associated Press reports on the underwhelming box office performance of Venom, The Last Dance, which earned $51 million during its opening weekend, falling short of expectations and previous franchise entries. Despite a production budget of around $120 million, the film's performance indicates a decline in the superhero genre's dominance, with overall projections suggesting 2024 could mark the lowest grossing year for superhero films in over a decade. While the film fared better internationally, grossing $124 million, its critical reception has been poor, leading industry experts to predict a challenging future for upcoming superhero releases. In contrast, the papal thriller, Conclave, has emerged as a success story, appealing to mature audiences and generating buzz as a potential Oscar contender. Associated Press reports that Narjas Mohammadi, the Iranian Nobel Peace Prize laureate, has been hospitalized after enduring severe health issues while imprisoned in Evan Prison. The Free Narjas Coalition has urged for her medical furlough to ensure she receives comprehensive treatment for her heart disease and other complications. Despite being sentenced to 30 months in prison, Mohammadi continues to face additional sentences for her activism, including a recent six-month term for protesting the execution of a fellow political prisoner. Her supporters demand her unconditional release and access to proper medical care, highlighting her resilience as the 19th woman to win the Nobel Peace Prize. Al Jazeera covers China's vehement response to the recent $2 billion arms sale from the United States to Taiwan, which includes advanced missile systems aimed at countering China's military assertiveness in the Asia-Pacific. The U.S. State Department's approval of the sale, which awaits congressional approval, has been met with strong condemnation from Beijing, which views Taiwan as a breakaway province. China has vowed to take all necessary measures to defend its sovereignty, and the tensions have escalated with increased military presence around Taiwan, including a record number of Chinese aircraft detected in a single day. The situation underscores the ongoing geopolitical struggle between the US and China over Taiwan's status. The Associated Press also reports on Uzbekistan's parliamentary elections, which are being held without any genuine opposition to President Shavkat Mirziyoyev, who has maintained a tight grip on power since 2016. 
Despite some reforms aimed at liberalizing the economy and easing censorship, Mirziyoyev's government continues to face criticism for its lack of political plurality and the ongoing imprisonment of political dissidents. The electoral system has been modified to include a mixed voting approach, yet all candidates are nominated by registered parties that do not oppose the president. As voters head to the polls, the legitimacy of the election remains in question, with many expressing concerns about the true state of democracy in the country. Associated Press reports on the vibrant Cape Town International Kite Festival, which celebrates its 30th anniversary while raising awareness for mental health. Kite enthusiasts from around the world, including the United States and Tunisia, gathered to showcase their colorful creations, such as fish inspired by Finding Nemo and a giant hand waving in the breeze. The festival not only adds a splash of color to the beach but also serves as a crucial fundraiser for Cape Mental Health, providing essential counseling services in the region. Organizer Barbara Meyer highlights the importance of the event, especially during the challenging times brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic, where many have faced isolation, job losses, and the emotional toll of losing loved ones. In another report, Associated Press covers an alarming incident involving former Bolivian President Evo Morales, who claims he survived an assassination attempt after gunmen opened fire on his vehicle in the Chapar region. Although Morales escaped unharmed, his driver was injured in the attack, which Morales attributes to political tensions with current President Luis Arce. The ongoing conflict between the two leaders has escalated, with Morales accusing Arce of utilizing physical force to undermine him politically. As Bolivia grapples with economic challenges, including road blockades and rising prices, the political landscape remains volatile, with Morales and his supporters rallying against the government's perceived mismanagement. Foreign policy delves into the significance of the BRICS summit held in Kazan, Russia, where the group expanded to include new members like Egypt and Iran. Analysts debate whether BRICS can truly challenge the Western-led international order and the dominance of the US dollar, as these emerging economies seek greater autonomy on the global stage. The summit showcased a united front among member nations, with leaders like Brazilian President Lula da Silva and Chinese President Xi Jinping emphasizing their collective power. As the global South navigates its relationship with traditional powers, the expansion of BRICS signals a shift towards a multipolar world, where new centers of power are emerging and challenging established norms. South China Morning Post reports that Beijing's recent sanctions on Kuma Academy, which promotes military preparedness among the Taiwanese public, come amid escalating tensions surrounding Taiwan's sovereignty. The sanctions were imposed after Taiwan's leader, William Lai Ching Te, delivered a speech perceived as provocative, coinciding with China's extensive military drills near the island. Kuma Academy's founders, Puma Shen and Robert Cao Xingcheng, were targeted for allegedly fostering violent pro-independence sentiments. Despite the Academy's denial of providing combat training, its initiatives align with Lai's efforts to bolster Taiwan's civil defense system, inspired by global examples of resilience in conflict. The Academy has been instrumental in raising awareness about emergency preparedness, with courses teaching attendees how to respond to potential threats from China, emphasizing the importance of being ready for conflict. RFI highlights the troubling situation in eastern DR Congo, where rampant gold mining, predominantly by Chinese firms, has led to significant environmental degradation and exploitation of local communities. Many of these companies operate without proper permits, contributing to pollution and the destruction of agricultural land. Local authorities have attempted to rein in these operations, suspending illegal mining activities until compliance with Congolese laws is achieved. However, the influx of foreign companies seeking to resume operations underscores the challenges faced by the government in regulating the sector. Artisanal miners struggle against the well-resourced Chinese firms, and the complex partnerships formed between local cooperatives and foreign companies often evade scrutiny, leaving authorities in the dark about production and profit-sharing arrangements. Associated Press reports on a tragic incident in the English Channel, where an Indian migrant lost his life attempting to cross from France to the UK. The man's boat, which was in poor condition, deflated shortly after departure, leading to his cardiac arrest and subsequent death on the beach despite rescue efforts. This incident marks a grim milestone in a year that has seen unprecedented fatalities among migrants attempting the perilous crossing, with 56 deaths recorded so far. The English Channel has become a dangerous route for those fleeing conflict and poverty, driven by strict asylum policies and a hostile environment in Europe. Many migrants still attempt the journey, motivated by the hope of better opportunities in the UK, 
despite the risks involved in navigating one of the world's busiest shipping lanes. New York Times, Georgia is currently engulfed in a political crisis following a disputed election that saw the ruling party, Georgian Dream, claiming victory amidst accusations of electoral fraud from the pro-Western opposition. The opposition, comprising four political groups, has vowed to boycott the newly elected parliament, citing significant violations during the election process, including voter intimidation and violence against opposition members. European observers criticized the election as poorly managed raising concerns that Georgia may drift further from its aspirations to join NATO and the European Union. As tensions rise, the ruling party remains steadfast in its position, with Prime Minister Irikli Kobakids asserting the legitimacy of their victory, while opposition leaders accuse them of manipulating the electoral process. BBC, in a vibrant celebration of Filipino culture, a small restaurant in Manhattan is reviving the ancient tradition of Kamayan, a communal feast where diners eat with their hands. This practice, which has roots in the Philippines' indigenous heritage, was largely overshadowed by colonial influences but is now being embraced by a new generation of chefs. At Tradition, diners gather around a beautifully arranged table adorned with banana leaves, indulging in a variety of classic Filipino dishes served without utensils. The experience not only fosters a sense of community and connection to heritage but also reflects a growing appreciation for Filipino cuisine in the culinary world. Chefs like Nicole Ponsica are leading the charge to elevate Kamayan dining, transforming it into a source of pride and cultural expression, as they invite diners to partake in this joyful and abundant culinary tradition. South China Morning Post, amid rising tensions in the South China Sea, the Chinese Navy has conducted military drills while the Philippines and Vietnam expand their territorial claims in the contested waters. The exercises, which involved air defense and missile interception, highlight China's assertive stance in the region, where it claims nearly all maritime territory under the Nine Dash Line. In response, the Philippines is enhancing its military capabilities, including upgrading airstrips and increasing naval assets, as it seeks to counter China's territorial ambitions. Vietnam, meanwhile, has also been actively reclaiming land in the Spratlys, further complicating the geopolitical landscape. As both nations adopt more aggressive postures, experts suggest that the Philippines' actions could disrupt the established development pace in the South China Sea necessitating careful management of maritime relations and potential crises with China. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email. Got a question in your mind We'll find the answer, we'll be kind Encyclopedia on everything Life and love Got the facts in one great place for kids and grown ups, too. We've got a P A to Z for you.
We'll find the answer, we'll be kind Got the facts in one great place for kids and grown-ups too.